Now I'd like to introduce our first uh, student speaker, Gina Angst. Gina is a human rights activist and global community organizer and educator. She's from Philadelphia. Her concentration is human rights and health advocacy. For the past decade, Gina has dedicated her life to supporting grassroots movements in Latin America, Europe, and the US. She is currently apprenticing as an acupuncturist and will continue her education this fall at the Juan Institute of Graduate Studies in Glendale, Pennsylvania, where she will pursue a master's degree in acupuncture studies. Gina spent several months in Chiapas, the southwestern part of Mexico, as a human rights observer. In her University Without Walls application, she wrote, quote, I learned from the indigenous people of the highlands and the rainforests of Chiapas, who had a collective vision like nothing I ever imagined, who were in a struggle they would not see resolve in their lifetime. They were slow moving and consistent, they were open to sharing stories and a cup of coffee and whatever they had. I felt like a very small part of something very big. Please join me in welcoming Gina Angst. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Professor Swopeth, Director Bracey, faculty and staff, friends and family, and the UMass Amherst University Without Walls Class of 2015. I'd like to start with a quote from the Uruguayan writer Eduardo Galeano. Scientists say that human beings are made of atoms, but a little bird told me they're made of stories. He must have graduated from the university without walls. I feel really lucky to be here with you all today. Like many of you, I'm sure, I wouldn't have expected to be here some years ago. It sort of happened by accident. I called the UWW office last year to tell them that I wasn't joining the program and to please stop emailing me <laughs> to remind me of upcoming events. But UWW staffer Melanie De Silva answered the phone and was too friendly and encouraging to hang up on. She transferred me to Shekhar Regmi, who later became my UWW advisor sometimes more like a life coach, full of encouraging words and easy laughter. That first day he said, you'll see Gina, you can do it. I really believe we can make it work out, you'll see. After I hung up the phone, I was sort of stunned. I'm getting a bachelor's degree? After high school, I closed the door on formal education and certificates. I spent about 10 years in Latin America and in Spain, among other kinds of teachers. People who were never recognized as teachers. People who taught me so much about life, about community, about the land, about what is possible when you dare to dream. I soaked in stories I never thought I'd find in a classroom. Until now, I thought the classroom wouldn't want these stories anyway. I thought the halls of academia were too narrow to fit these stories. I started at the University Without Walls thinking it would be like most classroom settings, where students don't have authority to create knowledge, like there are right answers and there are wrong answers, and like our job is to please the teacher. I'm sure people say this every year, but I'll say it again. UWW classrooms are different. Not just because they're online, which for me took a lot of getting used to. I remember listening to my teacher's recorded chemistry lecture on orbitals. After replaying it a few times, I still wasn't getting it. I looked around to see if anyone else understood, but no one else was in my kitchen in the middle of the night trying to decipher chemistry. So I learned how to type my questions into the forum and wait until someone who was perhaps in their own kitchen late at night like I was to respond. That was all new for me. But unlike most places called college, at UWW, I found teachers who were also learners. Learners who were also teachers. 
I found advisors and faculty members who display a firm belief that we, as adults, have many stories to tell, and then in doing so, in interaction with each other, with fellow students sitting at their computers in all different places, at different stages of life, with really diverse paths, we would learn best. In fact, the UWW curriculum itself is based on this belief, that there's more to see than what was generally passed off as not worthy as academia. That taking a closer look at the sand we'll discover it's made of tiny bits of grain that tell the history of the world in every grain. With this curriculum, we were given a gift. The space, the excuse, and the support to rummage through the last decades of adventure and struggle, and heartache, and life learning. We were given a great reason to tie up strings, to draw conclusions, to sift ideas, and to fork out questions, and to challenge assumptions. We got to honor our experiences by writing them out and sharing them with each other, all in a climate of cooperation and respect. And for our efforts, we, learned, we earned credit, credit for the learning we have gained through these experiences. This is why I'm sure when I say that we're more prepared after this educational experience. Not only because we can put a prestigious degree from the University of Massachusetts Amherst on our resume, but because we didn't do it until now. Because we chose to step on other stones in the path and face down adversi adversary and overcome challenges that have made our journey so much richer. By the time we were in these classrooms together, we had so much to share. We dared to dive deep, and we found burning questions, and we found solid truths. And now when we walk around in the world, we have a bit more sense of who we are, why we're walking, even if we don't know where we're going to end up. Having recognized these strengths at UWW, we're now more secure and confident in our steps ready for our next adventure to begin. I'd like to thank, take a moment and thank my family and friends in Philly and Jersey and New York for keeping hot, nutrition meals on the table, some for being my tireless paper editors and brainstorm facilitators, and some for even being subjects of my papers, though they might not have known it at the time. <laughs> and also for helping me continually remember why it was worth it to have my head buried in books when there was so much going on in the world that I felt the need to drop everything and respond to. I'd also like to thank my advisor, Shekhar Regmi, for believing in me like you do, and for being the kind of person who makes people want to go into education. <laughs> <laughs> and to the faculty and staff at UWW and the faculty at UMass Amherst, thank you for providing me, for providing all of us with ex an extraordinary education. This feels like a group effort, and I wish I could bring you all up here with me. I invite everyone graduating today to take a moment and applaud those in the background whose names aren't printed on our diplomas but who really made this possible for each of us. And finally, I'd like to invite everyone today to recognize the value of our hard work and all that we're wrapping up here at this ceremony. We can proudly stand within a population of students who are fighting for education. Students have always been strong participants in making change something I certainly have seen in my travels, from the students of the Teachers College in Ayotzinapa, Mexico, where 43 of them were disappeared last September, to Baltimore, Maryland, where most recently students are raising important questions that wake up our society and invite us to engage in shaping our future. Here at UMass Amherst, there's a long tradition of student activism, and the University Without Walls has prepared us well to continue thinking critically and reflectively about the world we live in. 
On our short time on Earth, we must think about how we want to spend it, what we want to stand for. We've been given a remarkable opportunity at the University Without Walls. We will surely see the fruits of this program and all that we've accomplished at UMass Amherst in many aspects of our lives for years to come. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2015.